Hello everybody and welcome back to a little bit different type of a video for the channel. Usually do KSP videos. We'll be back in KSP tomorrow. But uh, I just uh, thought it'd be a good idea to do kind of like a little bit of a breakdown video uh, for uh, yeah, the hop that we saw a few days ago. Uh, just because I think a lot of people have some uh, misconceptions about what happened. Because I mean, it was kind of a wacky flight. Nothing really went as, ex as we expected it to go. Um, uh, later on, if you kind of were watching Twitter, there were quite a few people who, you know, tweeted out, and it turns out this is all expected. We got a lot more information, but I really don't expect, like, most people to be, like, glued to Twitter watching what's happening. So, uh, I just wanted to put this uh, video out to talk about some of the stuff and some of the common stuff that are kind of misunderstandings about what happened and kind of uh, get through get through what the expected profile was for the flight and what went right and uh, what, uh, what didn't uh, go right. Um, and the first thing that didn't go right was in this uh, very first attempt right here. Uh, as you see, any second now, they will hold, say... Hold on countdown. Hold, hold, hold. So uh, they uh, held the timer. It showed at 2.06 on the stream, T minus 2 minutes, 6 seconds. And you can see detanking right there coming out of the vehicle. Uh, because what they, they have to depressurize the tanks. And when they do that, that uh, that causes boil off with propellant. So they have to basically refuel the entire vehicle every time they do a hold like this, which is why we had to wait all that time for the second launch attempt. Uh, this, we believe, was uh, because uh, the hold was caused by a Cessna aircraft that violated uh, the TFR or the, uh, the airspace restriction uh, for the hop. So yeah, I'm just going to, uh, I have the YouTube video pulled up here, so I'm just going to scrub through the, uh, scrub through the SpaceX video. Uh, a little bit more of an informal type of a video, just wanted to get a nice uh, quick video out for you guys talking about this hop. So we're going to uh, quickly just scrub on over to, uh, to the actual launch set that was not a scrub, but I mean, hey, words are words. Um, and this was the attempt that did work. So I'm actually just going to shut up here for a few seconds and listen to, uh, Four, let you guys watch and listen three, to this pretty, pretty epic two, launch. One. So yeah, that uh, that doesn't really ever get old, does it? So we have those three Raptors which ignited uh, very well and are firing um, perfectly, basically. So what you'll see right now, if you look in the uh, bottom right screen, the first thing that we saw was a roll program uh, where the vehicle kind of rolled. Um, we believe that's because they were, they were trying to align the uh, align the fins perpendicular to the uh, airstream. So that the kind of the fr the the big side of the fin was uh, hitting the oncoming air uh, as the vehicle slightly pitched over f uh, during the ascent. Um, they do that because uh, for stability reasons, basically. The, um, yeah. So uh, the first thing that didn't go uh, as planned. The ascent was kind of the kind of the craziest part in terms of uh, uh, breaking expectations or uh, just being yeah completely wacky. So what uh, I think I expected and most people expected was them to fire the three engines for about a minute to a minute and a half and then they're going to cut them then they're going to coast on up to Apogee then flip over, do the belly flop and land. Uh, that is not at all what happened. So um, what we saw here uh, just over a minute and a half into flight is they turned off just the one engine. This uh, top left engine right here turned off and the other two kept propelling it. A lot of people thought that was an engine failure. I even thought that uh, on my live stream because it really wasn't expected. Uh, turns out this was completely planned as confirmed by uh, Elon Musk on Twitter. So uh, they're likely doing this um, for reasons I'll get to in a second because uh, I want to talk about this uh, this engine shutdown, uh, which was also pretty interesting and uh, didn't really go as a lot of people expected. So there it was. Um, let's talk about that one more time, but um, I'm going to take the speed down because I think something really interesting happened. So watch the gimbling of the engines as it uh, as it turns off. It goes like that. Look at that. The engine gimbled away from the other two as it uh, as it turned off. You can see the other ones kind of gimbling to correct for the loss of thrust. So um, we think that happened because um, they were trying to um, a get this engine out of the way of the gimbling of this other two engines, uh, and b uh, because uh, they wanted because uh, as the engine shuts down, there there's kind of like fire that comes out the bottom. Uh, that's just the last few bits of propellant. Um, combusting, and they just wanted to keep all the exhaust stuff away from the other two engines, just 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 to be safe. So, yeah. Uh, speaking of the the fire stuff, th this was a, a comment I got, uh, a few comments I got saying, um, like, look at all that fire. Like, you know, that can't be good. Like, it's going up into the skirt of the engine. Like that that you know, some people were saying that could have caused problems. Um, that's actually completely expected to happen. So uh, the reason that happens, uh, that is the uh, the unburnt methane. Uh, that's just the last few drops of methane that came through the engine. That is uh, combusting with 
the oxygen in the air, uh, which is causing a fire. It's a much lower uh, temperature flame than the raptors are burning. Um, and it's a, it's much lower uh, temperature flame than uh, stainless steel um, will have any problems with. So there's absolutely no problems with this, the steel or any of the internals like melting or being damaged or anything. That is just fully expected. Uh, it's a, if you look at the flame, uh, as you can see, that's a, like a really bright red versus uh, the, the blue-ish clear type flame coming out of the raptors. Um, which indicates is a much lower temperature combustion than that. So there's really nothing to worry be worried about uh, during this uh, during the shutdown. So um, the next event that happened was the second engine shutdown, which was right here, or the second engine that shut down was this one, and it happened uh, just a little a bit later into flight. We'll just um, fast forward over to there, about three minutes into the flight. So, and it does the same gimbly thing. This engine is going to be the last one firing and it has to correct. And there it goes and it gimbles away as a little bit of fire goes up the skirt again. Now, uh, the reason we think they did this um, this engine shutdown type of, or like, um, you know, gradual shutdown of the engines. And we also think that they throttled uh, this uh, third engine because that exhaust looks really, really uh, lightly colored. Um, I mean, granted, it, it, it does uh, become that color because uh, there's less pressure in the atmosphere and the exhaust gases are expanding uh, further out. Uh, but we do think they did throttle because, um, yeah, that, that got really light, that exhaust. So um, the reason we expect it, um, them to... Uh, or not the expect, the reason that we, uh, we, we think that they did the, um, the gradual engine shutdown... Um, is because they wanted to um, be basically begin their flip with the engine on or hit Apogee with the end. They didn't want to do any sort of coasting up to Apogee without any um, engines because this uh, vehicle is extremely bottom heavy and with those aero surfaces it could very easily flip over and become um, become unstable. So that's uh, the reason we think that they did this. They basically went into a hover uh, with the one engine firing um, and they kind of, if you watch uh, as this engine cuts out in the next uh, little bit here, you'll see it kind of gimbals a second before it shuts down to kind of help with that, uh, help push the vehicle over uh, to kind of help start the belly flop. So we can see the fin and there it goes shutting down as it gimbled over. We can look at that one more time. I'll bring the speed back on that to, uh, to uh, 0.25 and you can see it gimbling away and cut off. So that uh, kind of helped with the, to help flip the vehicle over. And the fin, the back fins also did uh, retract, which also helped uh, flip the vehicle over. So, all so far, the flight is going perfectly as planned. And now we see the vehicle. We can see the um, the reaction control thrusters. Uh, they do fire. There they go. Uh, just helping to keep the vehicle stabilized. And there it goes, flipping over into its belly flop position. And this so far seems to be going perfectly as planned. And uh, one thing I do want to quickly note about the belly flop is there is a lot of um, a lot of fuel venting coming here. Uh, that is perfectly uh, perfectly normal. You want to keep you want to do venting just to uh, keep the pressure in the tanks uh, normal. Um, and don't be uh, uh, you know kind of tricked by like the huge cloud. Um, some people are saying like oh my gosh like half the fuel is coming out. Uh, that's actually not the case. Um, this is actually a very small amount of fuel, a uh, relative the amount of fuel in the tanks. The reason it's such a big cloud is um, just because it's expanding because it becomes a gas when it meets the air because the fuel is at cryogenic temperatures, i.e. very, very cold. So that means the fuel is very, very, very dense. So um, uh, what you're seeing uh, come off here is a very small amount of fuel relative to the amount of fuel that's actually in the, uh, in the, in the vehicle. So uh, they did. Um, they did a successful belly flop. The belly flop went basically perfectly. There's not much to comment on, on the belly flop aside from the fact that it's it was awesome. I mean, look at the fins move as um, as they controlled the vehicle on its way down. So this was a huge success uh, for uh, for SpaceX. Um, yeah, GG to them for a very successful uh, belly flop. Um, the next uh, major event, which is really the biggest event of the whole. Um, of the whole flight was uh, was that flip maneuver at the end. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to let uh, let the flip and the landing play uh, quickly, and then I will discuss what happened and what went uh, right and what went uh, wrong. Because uh, I mean, as you can see, or you've probably already seen, the result was um, not really what they wanted. <laughs>
Yeah, so a bit of an explosion at the end there. So let's uh, let's talk about this. So as the vehicle got low, as it got through the clouds here, they transitioned to this shot. And then we can see the engines. So uh, one thing I would like to talk about with these engines. So if you saw during the landing burn or on other videos and stuff, they only fired two engines. Only these two engines right here, as you can see, were firing. That third engine was not firing. Now, uh, a lot of people, me included, thought that was an engine failure initially upon watching it. So, like, that engine didn't uh, didn't fire. Um, that actually, that engine not firing was expected. Um, the reason we can see that is you can see these two engines gimbaled together um, in preparation for a further relight. And this engine, you can see, is gimbling away from the other two. You can see it right here. It is gimbling towards the camera. So it is definitely... Um, it is definitely not supposed to be firing here. It is gimbling away from the other engines. So we have these two engines. They flip forward like so. And then they flip uh, the other way to help cancel out the flipping maneuver to get the vehicle aligned with uh, the center. So this is where the uh, interesting... So I'm going to turn the volume down just a little bit because that's really annoying to listen to. So this is where the interesting stuff starts to happen. We start to see a little bit of a green flame come out of this engine. There it is again. And then you'll see this engine um, completely uh, completely fails. And there it goes. It just, it just completely dies. And then this engine starts to burn a super bright green flame as it comes down. And then the velocity starts to increase. And then the vehicle kind of just ends up, uh, yeah, smashing, <laughs> smashing right into the launch pad, uh, which or the landing pad. So what happened here? So, um, one thing that I think is one of the, the this is probably the biggest uh, misconception about the flight um, that I've seen just countless comments about. Um, uh, this green flame right here is not actually TTAB. This is not the igniter fluid uh, because on the Falcon 9 or and the Falcon Heavy and some other rockets, um, there is a green flash just prior to engine ignition. Um, that is uh, triethyl aluminum, triethyl boring, if you don't know. Um, it's what they use to ignite the engines. It's like it's the igniter fluid. It's a pyrogolic or pyro pyrophoric. That's the word. Um, fuel that uh, that causes uh, the ignition to start. So th um, it's reasonable to assume, right, that the Raptors use the same thing as the Merlin. Um, that's actually not the case. Um, Raptors use torch igniters, um, which are very similar to spark plugs, so they can be ignited multiple times. If you don't know the reason, uh, the one Falcon Heavy core booster on, I believe it was the first or second Falcon Heavy launch, uh, the reason it failed uh, was because it ran out of TTAB, so it couldn't reignite its engines. Because uh, TTAB, um, they only have a very limited amount of it on board, so they, you know, I mean, even if this was TTAB, like, you can't be, like, shooting TTAB through an engine for, like, you know, 10 seconds, like, is for, I mean, it wasn't 10 seconds, I'm exaggerating a bit, but uh, they would have, you know, beyond ran out. Um, and so, yeah, this was not TTAB. Uh, what we uh, believe this was was some copper burning um, inside the engine um, because the engine was running oxygen-rich uh, because of a low-pressure problem, um in the uh, in the header tanks uh, if you don't know what the header tanks are there are a header tank right here and a header tank down here there is the oxygen header tank and then the methane header tank i believe um so what these header tanks are uh the reason they the reason they exist they're two small kind of circular tanks uh that are separate from the main tank so uh, when the vehicle is in its belly flopped position when it's uh flat uh, you know, obviously flying flat with the airstream, you can see it right here, just as the engines reignite. Um, the fuel, uh, the way they keep the fuel, the main fuel tanks pressurized uh, in this prototype is by pumping helium into it to keep it pressurized. Uh, the problem is when you're flying flat, um, the pressure is causing uh, the fuel not to be able to be um, moved to the engines because all the fuel is concentrated at the bottom and the pumps, um, you, you can't pump the fuel into the you know, engine because it's not, you're not flowing downward. So you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be able to get enough fuel to sustain um, a six-day uh, firing of the Raptor. So they have two other uh, mini fuel tanks that are used just for the landing burn, uh, which are the header tanks. And what they do um, is they are a constantly pressurized because they're fully fueled, so they're, they have their full pressure, um, so they can uh, more easily draw fuel from them. Um, and the way they retain their pressure uh, is through something called autogenous pressurization. So what they do is um, they take some of the fuel 
that goes down to the engine, the really warm fuel, because, you know, it's, you know, engine combustion, right? And then they reroute that uh, back into the header tanks. Um, and now that it's a higher um, heat, it's, um, uh, it takes up less volume. Uh, therefore, it can pressurize the, uh, the remaining tank uh, or the, the area of the tank that was, uh, that was drained. So that's how they keep the pressure. So um, something went wrong and the header tanks were too low of pressure which uh, meant that uh, fuel couldn't get to the engines, uh, which means, um, first of all, this engine just completely failed. It didn't get enough fuel to sustain combustion, so it, uh, it just kind of it kind of gave up on life here. Um, and then this uh, second engine, uh, you'll see it uh, kind of die here. Any second here, and oh, 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 it's still hanging on. Still hanging on, and there it goes. Um, and this engine started burning green uh, because there's running oxygen rich in the in, uh, in the turbo pumps. Um, this was a theory my friend came up with. Same theory uh, Scott Manley had. Um, what we think happened uh, was um, uh, that the um, oxygen rich. When you're running oxygen rich, um, it oxygen is it's much more melty basically. So what we think happened um, is. Uh, that uh, the internals of the engine were kind of getting melted by uh, um, the oxygen-rich mixture, which caused copper in the engine to melt, uh, which is what produced that green flame. So uh, that's that's the reason for that green flame as it comes into land. So you can actually see if you play it back in uh, in full times speed, it's a little a uh, little more obvious uh, as you can watch. The engines uh, relight. Just pay attention to the speed of the engine, uh, speed of the vehicle. Uh, before and after the engines fail. So you can see the first engine go here, and then as it starts to burn green, you can actually see the velocity of Starship kind of accelerate a little bit um, because that green uh, engine is not producing, it's producing very little thrust. So the thing basically uh, for its last second or two of flight is has very little power. So it kind of just falls, uh, it falls straight down onto the onto the launch pad. And a good thing they hit the launch pad and not um, some of the other stuff as it was looking like they... Um, they actually might have been. They weren't exactly on target during this part. Um, that was uh, likely they had uh, because of the engines not being able to, you know, throttle or have their low throttle, so they couldn't really gimbal them to control the vehicle's trajectory during the last few uh, last few seconds of flight. But uh, yeah, that uh, that is basically what happened with uh, with SN8. The nose cone actually survived. It's pretty cool. And Elon said they'll try and uh, recover it. And there's Starhopper just enjoying the view. So that's going to be the end of my video. Hopefully you found it helpful, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Until next time, please be sure to comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. Until next time, and bye.